Hey, this is Joel. I'm the CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. I'm gonna be demonstrating the installation of a smoke detector right now. This is a hardwired smoke detector with battery backup. It's a KID FireX. It's our go-to. It's cost-effective, incredibly reliable. We haven't had any um, nuisance calls that I'm aware of associated with this particular smoke detector. All right, it comes with a, uh, a dust skirt. Dust can actuate a smoke detector, whether it's uh, any type of dust. And so this will protect it. We'll reinstall that when we're done, but I don't want it to get in the way of the mounting. <clears throat> so uh, here I've got a mounting plate. I'm gonna pull my wires through. Smoke detectors are wired with a three wire mechanism. That's a hot and neutral and then the set of red conductors. So to the first smoke detector in the circuit, it's a two wire with ground, hot, neutral, and ground. Between every subsequent smoke detector, it's a three wire installation that's hot, neutral, ground, and the red, which is the communication between smoke detectors. So when one of these smoke detectors actuates, they all actuate. Code for smoke detectors is one on each floor and one in each bedroom. Now, something to note here is the authority that has jurisdiction called the AHJ is the ruling authority. The National Electrical Code is widely recognized as well as some state residential codes and some international building codes. But the National Electrical Code or any other code council is not the authority that has jurisdiction. They're not the ruling body. So the inspector is the first line of defense for the ruling body and he can require smoke detectors or an alteration to the code as he chooses. His supervisor is the second line of defense. And then typically as a state, the state will adopt a code cycle. So every three years, a new cycle of the National Electrical Code comes out. 2005, 2008, 11, 14, 17, 20, and so on. And, um, but then that code, the particular code of choice of the state or jurisdiction gets adopted and then amendments are made if they so choose to that code and that becomes the ruling body. And so if smoke detectors are required by an inspector, that's what you have to live with. They can require more than one per floor. If there's a substantial separation, separation, closed doors, a bulkhead, something that would impede the flow of smoke to the smoke detector to actuate the entire house and all of the smoke detectors to get everyone out safely in time. So we're installing a smoke detector in the living room here. There's the mounting plate. I'm going to be using 832 screws to secure the mounting plate to the plastic box. Something to note here, this is one of the rare occasions and one of the exceptions that we have a plastic box, we have a fully plastic device, the smoke detector, and it does not have a grounding screw or lead. So this ground wire will actually not be utilized. We're going to push it up in the box, out of our way. There's no termination point for the ground wire in this installation. Next, we're gonna take the, the whip that came with the smoke detector and there's a cap on the red. The reason for that is um, not all smoke detectors are wired in an interconnected configuration, but you'll see I removed the cap and there is a stripped lead ready for use. I'm making up color to color. That's white to white. All of my white conductors are going to be grouped. These white conductors were only temped in for testing purposes. They've not been pre-twisted. So I'm going to do a good solid pre-twist on my solid conductors, about three revolutions. Then I'm going to introduce my stranded conductor. I'm gonna match all the ends and I'm using a tan ideal wire nut to secure the termination. I'm going to give the stranded conductor in particular the tug test that's extremely tight. I'm gonna repeat that process for the black and the red. I've got my 832 screws here. They don't need to be long. I'm supporting a very, very small amount of weight. I'm gonna go ahead and, because this smoke detector mounting plate has an almost universal configuration for sizes of boxes and screw spacings, I'm gonna go ahead and install my screws. Just screw them in just a little bit. I'm gonna match the appropriate 
screw spacing. And I'm going to twist it on. I have to back that screw out just a little bit. I'm going to snug it up. This is a plastic mounting plate and it's supporting a very lightweight smoke detector. It doesn't require much to hold it in place. I'm going to take all of my wire groupings and I'm going to fold them into the blue plastic electrical box. And then turn my smoke detector to the right until it fits in place. I'm removing the battery compartment, insulates the terminals, and at this point I am reinstalling the dust skirt to prevent accidental actuation. Thanks. Join me for the next video. We're going to be exploring how to properly install a receptacle in an unusual situation.